If you have one of those HP RTX graphics cards, this video is for you. Hey guys, welcome back to HowSS channel. My name is Ivan and this is a follow-up video on the one that I did earlier this year, how to improve the temperature on the RTX 3080 made by HP coming inside the uh, Omen 30L or 45 or all the other versions now they came out after that. If you guys see my previous video, we did a lot of improvements on the temperature, but over time and from a lot of feedback from different people and from you guys, I, I noticed there's some differences between temperatures, there's some differences between uh, your experience and my experience. So what I decided to do is test different thickness thermal pads, different configurations, different brands. And over the last couple of weeks, I ran completely different tests and completely different uh, versions so I can find out what's the optimal situation with this card so we can get the temperatures as low as possible and make them much more comfortable. Now, long story short, after my last video, I noticed that my RAM temperature is still pretty high compared to some other results from other people. So that's why I tried to uh, do some different testing. And you're going to see the results I finally achieved with some specific thermal pads and with some specific uh, ways of improving the temperature. So let's go ahead and we'll check it out right away. And at the end, we're going to talk about it in the conclusion. So starting in the beginning, uh, you'll see this is basically what the cooler looks on the RTX 3080. We have very thick four copper heat pipes. We have heat sinks on both sides of the PCB. And this is the front. If I move on to the next picture, you'll see the back side here. When you remove the back plate, there is nothing on the back that makes a contact with these components to the metal back plate. So this is one spot you might want to consider putting half a centimeter thermal pads which I lined up around here where the memory backside is and on top of the chips that are sitting behind the die. Uh, this is uh, part of the uh, heatsink as well. So if we move to the next picture you will see this is what the backplate looks uh, outlined where exactly the memory is landing. So you can kind of put your thermal pads here as well instead of lining them up on the back of the PCB in these specific spots. Uh, that's what I did. I put these uh, thermal pads right here and I was able to uh, lower a little bit down the temperature, I guess. Uh, or if you consider that before having the thermal pads here, if you touch with your hand, your back plate, it wasn't that hot. But now I can actually feel the heat uh, pretty significant actually on the back plate, uh, which means heat transfer is happening. And if you have good fans that will contribute to the cooling down of the components as well. So now if we go ahead and open the graphics card, you'll see, um, unfortunately, the design that uh, HP has chosen here is we have one vapor chamber with the heat pipes and the, and the heat sinks. And on top of the PCB, we have a metal plate, uh, kind of a brace plate that actually is contacting with the memory underneath. And don't mind the thermal paste here. Uh, definitely there was no thermal paste initially when I opened the card and you guys seen it on my previous video. Uh, HP opted out to not put any thermal paste or thermal pads between the plate and the vapor chamber, which I think is the biggest mistake here. And after me testing many, many different options, different thicknesses and brands of thermal pads, this made the biggest impact applying some thermal paste here on top of the plate that contacts with the vapor chamber. Um, so if I go further a little bit, you will see this is where we have the thermal pads, skinny, smaller strips on the VRMs, and we have the ones on top of the memory chips right here. Uh, this is kind of the stock one, uh, what I measured here and what I reached to the conclusion is you need a one millimeter thermal pads in order everything to work correctly. I've tried uh, 0.5, that was contributing to, to the opposite effect. Uh, temperatures were going high because we were not making a good contact with the chips. And I was trying 1.5, which was way too much. And the die was not getting almost none of the contact with the vapor chamber and the copper on top of it. So the temperature of the die was going uh, crazy. So the formula is use one millimeter pads on the memory uh, chips and that's going to be good. And then for your VRMs, uh, I experimented with different thicknesses as well from 1.5 to, to 3 and I ended up actually using 1.5. I think uh, it gave me the best results. Some people are saying 2, some people are saying 3. I don't know what kind of pressure they're applying on their screws. But I use 1.5 and I am fine with the temperature that I achieved. So now once you apply your new thermal pads, this is what I did. I reattached the 
top brace plate and I did kind of a, a longer skinnier uh, strips of thermal paste right on top of the metal plate uh, so they can contact with the copper vapor chamber above. Don't mind this uh, application of thermal paste. I actually did a lot more. I just wanted to make sure and I tested different options uh, by spreading it around, by just leaving a dot, just doing these five steps. Uh, what I ended up doing is I just put a long strip, just like on these side ones, uh, a little bit thicker. That way it was equally spread out and actually for uh, GPUs, it's better to have a little bit more uh, than less of what we're doing on CPUs. So the temperature was fine what, uh, with my application. That's a little bit of a closer look here. If I go to the next one, uh, these, these are the new pads applied before I peeled the plastic on top of them. This is how it looks again with the original uh, thermal pads. So now if we look at the results, uh, don't mind my CPU, which actually is pretty good considering it's uh, 10 and 900K. Uh, we have 81 degrees. This was one of the highest I've actually measured after gaming for hours and hours with uh, ambient temperature about 22, 23 degrees Celsius, uh, which you're looking at Delta of about 60 degrees. And the memory, now you're gonna see the maximum is about 92 to 94 degrees. Same with the hotspot, 92 to 94 degrees, which was incredible improvement because even with my previous application, without the thermal paste between the plate and the vapor chamber, I was getting still over 100 degrees on the memory and over 100 degrees on the hotspot, which is, uh, Again, not as bad as was the original one because the original one was going over 110, 115 degrees, but still not where I was aiming to go and not what I was wanting to see. So these are temperatures that I'm actually very, very comfortable with. These are actually excellent temperatures um, on par or even better than some other GPUs I have in my possession. Uh, definitely slightly better than the FE edition and slightly better than some of my other EVGA cards. Uh, so that application and this whole configuration actually does a pretty good job but again one key factor here is applying thermal paste on top of the metal plate that sits on top of the memory chips and makes the contact with the vapor chamber and the heat sinks uh, that are also providing the cooling for the die um, so that is the biggest take here you know i'm going to go through a couple of other screenshots and you'll see temperature varies now we have 79 here on the gpu and 94 a little bit more on the memory but uh i think the, the biggest thing here is because the memory is running so low, the fans of the card are not spitting that high. So the GPU runs slightly warmer because before my application of the thermal paste, uh, I was getting about 108 to 110 degrees uh, Celsius on the memory and the hotspot. But the GPU was running around 72 because the fans were spinning so crazy high above uh, 2500 RPMs. The noise was unbearable. Yeah, the GPU was cool, but I think the GPU is fine running around 80 degrees Celsius without any problem. At the same time, the memory is very cool and that reflects on the noise because if you see the fans are not running anywhere above that 2500, they actually are hovering around 21, 2200. So the noise is very low and it's much better than what we've seen before. And this is actually the highest I've seen about 2200 RPMs you see the same temperatures across all these screenshots very close depending on the ambient which i said it varies between 21 and 23 degrees celsius so um, this kind of modification if anybody is doing it please consider applying thermal paste between that metal plate and the vapor chamber it's going to make a huge dif uh, difference and again use one millimeter thermal pads for the memory one and a half or two for the vrms and use high quality thermal paste obviously non-conductive uh, so not electrically conductive, so you can uh, make the contact between the vapor chamber and this plate much better. Uh, this way the heat is going to uh, dissipate much, much better and you're going to get a cooler memory. And of course, optional in the back of the plate, you can apply some more of those thermal pads. That way the heat will be led from the PCB directly to the back plate and blown away from your fans. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go in into the conclusion. All right, conclusion time. And as you can see, I think I finally reached the optimal cooling performance from that RTX 3080. Unfortunately, while filming the whole process, uh, something happened with my memory card, so I couldn't not 
uh, do it you know real life like I wanted to do so I had to do the commentary with screenshots and stuff like that uh, hopefully you guys get the importance of the message that I'm trying to rely and what we're trying to do uh, so uh, bottom line what you need to do is use one millimeter thick uh, thermal pads preferably from some respectable brand I personally use thermal right I'm gonna put some links on the description of the, in the video if you want to use the exact same ones but it's up to you uh, there's better brands and there's some other brands that people prefer so that's okay uh, and I used 1.5 millimeter thick thermal pads other people have used two millimeter and some even more personally I see no difference between one and a half and two millimeters so I'm using one and a half just to avoid any uh, warping or anything like that and the most important part is please apply thermal paste between the brace or the metal plate that sits on top of the PCB it's right below the main cooling solution which is the vapor chamber with the thick four copper heat pipes and the radiator so if you apply that that's going to make the most difference because before that and without it no matter what kind of thermal pads I used I always hit about 105 106 to 108 degrees Celsius on the memory which is pretty high and that makes the fans ramp up too high and of course that brings a lot of noise after I apply the thermal paste temperatures drop significantly about 15 16 degrees so now it's hovering between 92 and 94 degrees Celsius with a room temperature of 22 degrees Celsius so I am extremely happy with the results uh, the cart runs much cooler and quieter and of course you can continue enjoying it and playing your games until maybe you get something better the newer generation is great but a lot more expensive and hard to find so I think the 3080 will be probably the last price performance winner and it's going to serve us for a while so yeah that's pretty much it guys hit the thumbs up if you like the video stay tuned to the channel subscribe if you're new check out the links in the description below if you want to support me directly to bring you videos like this regularly and as always guys you have a wonderful day